Good afternoon, good morning, good evening everybody uh, from Sud in the UK. Um, as Simon said, my name is Andy Holmes and I'm going to be the presenter today for our discussion regarding ATEX, um, specifically to do with the product directive, the 949EC, and also a little bit regarding the user directive. So, if we look at the first slides, um, with the introduction, the objectives of explosion protection, the European directives on explosion protection according to Article 95 and 137, and the next section, we'll be looking at objectives of the directive 949EC, Europe, European harmonised standards for electrical sector, for the non-electrical sector, and definitions of equipment, protected systems and components for intended use in potentially exposed atmospheres, classification in equipment groups and categories, conformity assessment procedures, equipment categories, components and protected systems for which a type examination through notified bodies is mandatory, internal manufacturing control by the manufacturer's responsibilities, placing on the market freedom of movement and putting into service, restrictions of freedom of movement, ATEX guidelines. Link section section three is the basis behind explosion protection. Objectives of the standard, explosion protection concept, safety equipment, protective systems, and concepts. And moving on to interpretation of terminology. Explosive or potentially explosive atmospheres, atmospheric conditions, explosive protection, explosion, basic concepts of explosion protection. And lastly, a brief look into the quality system associated with this additional directive. So moving into the first section, the ATEX directive, or the product directive, 949EC, also called ATEX 95. The ATEX directive became available for use in March 1996 and mandatory on July the 1st, 2003. The ATEX directive is a new approach directive for CE marking and replaces three old approach directives mentioned below. Originally identified in mining applications, hazardous environments are those containing explosive mixtures of gases or dust. In response to health and safety concerns, standards for electrical equipment intended for use in these environments were developed. Several directives were introduced starting in 1975. Although useful tools for manufacturers, these rules were not mandatory until the introduction of the new approach directive. General objective, to keep technical processes and equipment as safe as possible when handling flammable substances in mixtures with oxidants and with self-decomposable substances in order to reduce the remaining explosion risk to an acceptable minimum. The measures of explosion protection, the primary explosion protection, avoid or reduce the creation of the propagation of potentially explosive mixtures. Secondary explosion protection, avoid or reduce the effectiveness of ignition sources. And finally, the tertiary or design explosion protection, limit an explosion technically by explosion flame proof enclosures, protect persons and property from its consequences. First objective should always be the primary explosion protection A. If this is not practical, A and B should be combined. Thereby, the scope of the primary explosion protection determines the remaining potentially explosive hazardous zones from where the necessary secondary explosion protection measures for device and equipment shall be determined to avoid potential ignition sources. European Directive for Explosion Protective, Article 100A, also called 95, Standard framework conditions have been set for explosion protection in all European member states for handling of potentially explosive atmosphere. Broad creating two directives, 949EC and also 9992EC. If you notice the remark at the bottom, this presentation is based around the product directive 949EC and not the user directive 9992EC. European Directive for Explosion Protection according to Article 100A, 95 continue. The Directive 9490C is a product design and construction directive which 
establishes explosion technical and process specific minimum requirements to match the objective of freedom of movement for equipment, components and protective systems, briefly called products, for operation in potentially explosive atmospheres. Both directives, 949 EC, the product, and 9992 EC, the user, applied simultaneously lead to explosion protection in potentially explosive areas with explosive atmospheres. Basically meaning that the two directives, although they're separate, will need to be interlinked together. The directive, 9490C, is also called ATEX product directive, or ATEX 95, based on Article 100A of the EC Treaty, regulates the product safety within explosion protection. Potentially explosive atmospheres. This is how we can see the two directives mixing together to form the complete solution. As you can see on the left, we have the user, this is the workplace, the environment, and on the right, we have the products that go in, will have some form of EX certification on them. The objective of the directive continued. Moving the trade barriers within the European community and creating freedom of movement for the explosion proof equipment and the components and protective systems called products detailed within the 949 EC directive. Establish the minimum requirements for health and safety which should be applied in all member states in order to ensure free movement of the product. Product equipment manufacturing and placing on the market in compliance with the essential requirements of the Directive 949EC. Free movement and putting into service of products equipment within the boundaries of the member states. The Directive 949EC is a harmonised directive. As you can see we've mentioned a web link to the Euro website where you can see other standards that are linked into ATEX, not only ATEX but also CE marking in general. Harmonised standard is a technical specification, European standard or harmonised document adopted by SEN and or Senelec. From the 1st of July 2003 onwards, the provision of the Directive 9490C have replaced existing divergent national and European legislation on this subject. The provisions of Directive 9490C are laid down with respect to the risks of explosions for electrical and also for non-electrical equipment and protective systems. The Directive is valid for equipment and protective systems intended for use in potentially explosive areas caused by air gas and air dust mixtures. The existing standards for the electrical sector of explosion protection the standards EN 679-XX. The standards have been the standards have been formally adapted to the Directive 949EC. Example for classification according to the German law for EN 1127 Part 1 and a connection to ATEX can be seen in the following slide mentioned. There are also existing standards for the non-electrical sector of explosion protection. EN 13463 and various parts thereof. Consideration must be given to the design, manufacturing, testing equipment, protective systems and devices. Essential health and safety with regard to conformity assessment process procedures. These standards, for example, flame arrests, explosion suppression systems, explosion pressure release systems, rotary valves, are similar to standards for electrical explosion protection. With regard to size of factories and number of employees, the manufacturing base for non-electrical equipment cannot be compared to the electrical industry. For flame arresters, there is a specific standard, EN 12874, which regulates the initial essential conditions for blowers and vacuum pumps for Category 1. Note that in the absence of harmonised standard, the manufacturer must take 
self-responsibility for any step he deems necessary in order for his equipment and protective systems to meet the essential health and safety requirements stated within the Directive 9493. For products that have been attested to an EC type exam examination by a notified body according to the Directive, Annex Part 3, and in the absence of RMI standards, the notified body has to carry out the examination responsibly in a way to fulfil the explosion protection criteria in the sense of the essential health and safety requirements. Notified bodies, therefore, have been given high levels of responsibility in decision making. This can be a benefit to the manufacturer for the interpretation of the explosion protection requirements. However, the responsibility for compliance still rests with the manufacturer. Definition of equipment protective systems and components for intended use in potentially explosive atmospheres. Now, to be within the scope of the Directive 9490C, the product has to be one of the below. Equipment, a protective system, a component, a safety, controlling or regulating device. Definition of equipment, protective systems and components for intended use in potentially explosive atmospheres. Equipment is defined as machine, apparatus, fixed or mobile devices, control components and instrumentation, detection or preventive systems. Separately or joint, jointly intended for the generation, transfer, storage, measurement, control and conversion of energy for the processing, processing of the material and which are capable of causing an explosion through their own potential source of, sources of ignition. Equipment is therefore not only single apparatus such as an electric motor or fan for example, but also a combination of several of these to an assembly. For example, a vacuum pump with its explosion protection requirements for the pumping of explosive atmospheres and the use in external potentially explosive atmospheres. The directive does not restrict the definition of equipment. Equipment could be an entire industrial processing system as well. A protective system is defined as design units which are intended to halt internal explosions immediately and or to limit the effective range of explosion flames and explosion pressures. Protective systems may be integrated into equipment or separately placed on the market for use in autonomous systems. Protective systems are, for example, flame arrestor, explosion suppression systems, explosion pressure release systems. Components are defined as continued any item essential to the safe function of the equipment and protected systems without autonomous function. Components are EX assembly parts, which are incorporated into equipment or a protective system. They cannot be hazardous themselves prior to their incorporation. Components, for example, thermal switches, terminals, pressure sensors, floaters for level indication service device. Equipment is classified in groups and categories. A group is related to the use of the equipment. Group 1 is for mining, underground parts and surface installations as well. Group 2 is for other places, business, trade, etc. Equipment Group 1 for mining is detailed in two categories, Category M1 and Category M2. Here we can see a typical example of a hazardous area classification overview schematic. It shows different areas, zone 0, zone 1, zone 2, for gases. Note the different types of symbol, the EX sign for the area above the word area and the EX symbol for the component or equipment in the bottom of the screen. Equipment Group 2. Categories 1, 2 and 3. Equipment is designated as categories. Category 1 is the one with the highest required levels of protection. Category, Q, category 3 would be compared to the apparatus for intended use in Zone 2. 
Category 1. Intended use in places in which explosive atmospheres consisting of a mixture of air and gases, vapors or mists, or air dust mixes are present continuously for long periods or frequently. Equipment in category in this category must be designed to ensure a very high level of protection even in the event of a disturbance relating to equipment and is categorized by means of protection such that in the event of a failure of one means of protection at least an independent second means provided the requisite level of protection. Requisite level of protection is assured in the event of two faults occurring independently of each other. Category 2, intended for use in places in which explosive atmospheres caused by gases, vapours or, or air dust mixtures are likely to occur, provide the requisite level of protection even in the event of frequently occurring disturbances or equipment failures that, would, that normally have to be taken into account. Category 3, in intended for use in places in which explosive atmospheres occur caused by gases, vapours or mists or air dust mixtures are unlikely to occur or if they do occur, occur not frequently and only for short periods of time. Provides requisite level of protection during normal operation. Here we can see that information for equipment group 2 with the categories and the zones and how those are linked in. The conformity assessment procedures. With the initial requirements for the directive, central requirements for the directive procedures have been set up for assessing the conformity equipment, components and devices in potentially exposed atmospheres, taking into account the hazards related to their use. Conformity assessment procedures are dependent upon the hazard level of equipment or components and or how a device is supposed to protect its direct environment. Therefore, each conformity character of equipment has to be completed by an appropriate conformity assessment procedure. The procedures are harmonised with the provisions 9368EEC concerning modules and regulations to apply within the different conformity assessment procedures in order to affix the, and use the CE marking in accordance with the technical harmonised standards. For protective systems, they do not belong to any category. In a case of emergency, a protective system must remain operative with or without an explosive atmosphere. For equipment, components and safety, control and regulation devices in the category M1 and 1, former zone 0 devices, for electrical equipment, electrical components, formerly, former zone 1 devices, and eventually safety, control and regulation devices and internal combustion engines in the category M2 and 2. All other products in the category M2 and 2, as seen before, do not require an EC-type examination through a notified body. These products are subject to an internal control of production by the manufacturer according to Annex. The manufacturer shall produce the, docu the technical documentation, the TCF, necessary to match explosion detection. Let's keep the documentation at disposal and at the disposal of the notified body for a period of at least 10 years after the last piece of equipment was manufactured. Alternatively, a single certification be carried out by a notified body according to the following annex. The manufacturer has a sole responsibility and liability for the fulfilment of proper explosion protection. Here we can see the conformity assessment procedures or groups Predominantly, with TUVSUD, we look at Group 2. EC-type examination certificate with ATEX number. For products manufactured and placed on the market in accordance with the product quality assurance, the notified body has the sole responsibility for fulfilment of explosion protection according to the directive. Non-electrical products in Category 2 and products in Category 3 do not require an examination by a notified body. The manufacturer has to carry out an internal control of production according to the following annex. 
If for the purpose of legal safety, the manufacturer also likes to have non-electrical products in Category 2, tested by a notified body, in view of their conformity with the Directive 949 EC, then this will be possible on a voluntary basis. The manufacturer is given a test report, and in the case of successful testing, we will receive a certificate from the notified body, but he cannot receive an EC-type examination certificate. Here we can see the complete conformity assessment process as detailed within the Directive 949 EC, with the different categories along the top and associated routes going down to either an EC, full EC type examination work performed by a notified body, or to the right of the screen, category three, you, know, you can self-declare certain parts for electrical and non-electrical equipment. Now, placing on the market freedom movement and putting into surface. Member states shall not prohibit, restrict or impede the placing on the market and the putting into service in their territory of equipment protection systems and devices which comply with the Directive 949 EC. The products with de de declaration of conformity and CE marking accept components. Also valid for components without autonomous function but necessary for the safe functioning of equipment and protective systems. For products in agent safety of persons, domestic animals or property. Member States shall take all appropriate measures to withdraw such products from the market. Member States shall prohibit the placing on the market, putting into service or the use thereof. Member States shall restrict free movement thereof. Member States shall immediately inform the Commission about failure to satisfy the essential requirements referred to in Article 3 of the Directive incorrect application of the standards referred to in Article 5 and shortcomings in the standards referred to in Article, also in Article 5. The ATEX guidelines to simplify the application of the Directive 949 EC. The brochure ATEX guidelines has been prepared by the Directorate General Enterprise of the European Commission. The objective is to clarify and define certain issues and procedures referring to the Directive. This document is not a legally binding interpretation of the directive and it can be found at the following Europa website. The standard in 1127, the top level document for assessment of uh, the product and also used with the area user, been prepared under a mandate given to the SEN by the European Commission and the EFTA to fulfil the Council Directive on the Approximation of the Laws of the Member States Relating to Machinery, the Council Directive 949EC, ATEX 95. The N1127 Part 1 has been prepared based on above mentioned directives and Directive 9992EC, also referred to as ATEX 137 for uniform risk assessment procedures when handling substances which may cause explosive atmospheres. In the selection and implementation of protection measures, the EN 1127 Part 1 describes the fundamental concepts and the mythology of the explosion protection. It then goes on to describe the fundamental concepts of the mythology of the explosion protection. It represents the connecting link between ATEX 95 and ATEX 137 and was set up to assist designers, manufacturers and other interested bodies to interpret the essential safety requirements of explosion protection in order to achieve conformity with European legislation. The objectives of the stand specifies methods for the identification and assessment of hazardous situations leading to explosions specifies design and construction measures appropriate for the required safety. Hazard identification in the form of a risk assessment, an ignition hazard assessment, and also determining the possible effects, damages of an explosion. Avoidance or limitations of risk, the fundamental principles of explosion protection. Avoidance of the explosive atmosphere, 
avoidance of any potential ignition sources, and then leading on to from that limitation of the possible effects of an explosion. In the planning and implementation of explosion protection, consideration should be given to normal operation, which includes starting the plant, shutting down the plant, and also possible malfunctions and foreseeable maluse of the plant. Particularly in Chapter 6.1 of the 1127 standard, it states the application of explosion protection measures through a requires a thorough knowledge of the facts and sufficient experience. It is therefore highly recommended that you look for expert guidance in performing the assessment. Will be achieved by removing the hazards and or limiting the risk by design and safeguarding. Communication is necessary in conveying information to the user and by other precautions. E1127 also deals with aspects linked to the intended handling of substances. E1127 is one of the essential standards for the provision of explosion protection measures. Its minimum requirements are laid down in the Directive 949 EC and in the Directive 9992 EC. Then moving on to the next section, the fundamental explosion protection terminology must be clearly defined to avoid misunderstandings and communication difficulties. It is important to focus on unequivocal technology. Not clearly defined terminology will lead to different interpretation of the users. A European Work Community Committee has been created to deal with the standardisation of terminology. Explosive and the atmosphere. Both explosion protection directives 9490C and 9992C are exclusively valid for explosive atmospheres. They are not valid for other explosive mixtures. The term explosive atmosphere is defined identically. Definition An explosive atmosphere is a mixture with air under atmospheric conditions of flammable substances in the form of gases, of vapors, of mists, or dust, in which, after ignition has occurred, combustion spreads to the unburned, entire unburned mixture. With this, the term explosive atmosphere is clearly defined, but the definition of atmospheric conditions is not. Thus, both directives have a legally open status. According to the Explosion Protection Regulations, valid up until now, total pressures of between 0 0.8 bar, 1.1 mixtures, mixtures temperatures of 20, between 20 and 6 degrees are considered here as atmospheric conditions. The term explosion protection is not defined in either explosion protection directive. It can be derived only or indirectly from the content of the directives. Explosion protection compromises all measures, comprises all measures for the protection against hazards caused by explosions. All definitions given apply to protective measures against explosions from ex explosive atmospheres and not from explosible mixtures, explosive substances and self decomposable substances. In EN 1127 Part 1, defines explosion as follows. To describe this general definition, these explosions can be divided into deflagration and detonations. Deflagration, deflagration is an explosion where the flame front is propagated in the tutorial mixture with a flame velocity in the range of up to some meters per second in ultrasonic sphere. The detonation. detonation is an explosion where the explosive mixture is ignited by an extensive shock wave and where the flame front is propagated at ultrasonic velocity and is characterized by a shock wave. Basic concepts for safety techniques have to be adopted based on the level of risk. An area where large quantities of explosive, potentially explosive mixtures are likely to accumulate, for example, is also considered as a potentially explosive area. Even if the remaining risk in this particular area is acceptable, acceptably small due to the protective measures already applied. 
And lastly, the quality system is based on the elements of ISO 9001, 2000 and associated parts. In addition to that quality system, ATAX also has an EN 13980, which is part of the quality system. If you are looking at equipment going into Zone 0, for gases, Zone 0 and Zone 1, and 20 and 21 for us, then we will be looking at doing quality audit systems and assessments. These are done on a yearly basis at the factory where the equipment is being made. And that concludes the presentation.